what's up YouTube back again with another video and in this video if you guys already seen is a love and hip-hop review love and hip-hop Hollywood season 5 episode 6 entitled pretty hurts all right so we're just gonna go ahead and get right on into the video Michelle and Moniz. K. Michelle is going in to speak with Dr. Soraya about getting the injections or whatever was placed into her body removed. And she goes into the story about five years ago, her getting some shots because getting booty shots was popular. She wanted a bigger booty. She felt that that would give her, you know, the fame that and the notoriety that she needed to step up in the music industry. So she did what she had to do. Um, long story short, she basically is having complications with it now to the point where she's unable to walk properly. She's feeling the pain and she's suffering from these shots that she had. And Dr. Soraya said he wants to definitely take a look at it and go ahead and treat her. In the meantime, before he even came in, she was talking to Moniz. Moniz basically lets her know that she apologizes for how she acted at her event. And um, <laughs> she was, you know, apologizing that she basically showed out. And K. Michelle was like, you wasn't the only one that showed out. Lyrica G showed out too, but I'm not about to beef with nobody mama. And speaking of Lyrica, she says, speaking of Lyrica, she saw Lyrica at Donatella's event and how um, Lyrica was pressed because this chick named LaBrittany who can't sing to save her life. Moniz's words, not mine. Um, this chick was all up in A1's, you know, set and whatever. And... And Rockstar was there, and Rockstar was basically clowning a one. And K. Michelle was like, she said she know that man. And Monique said, well, they're supposed to be best friends. And <laughs> K. Michelle was like, that don't sound right. Mm. Sure don't. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next scene. So we saw Lyrica and Apple Watts, and they were in a pole dancing class together. Well, they were just by themselves at a pole dancing class. And Lyrica wanted to get a little workout in to get her mind off of A1. So that she decided to, you know, um, meet up with Apple Watts, who has now become one of her good, good girlfriends. And, you know, shoot the breeze. So as they finished their workout, which is like a butt floor move, <laughs> um, she basically, Apple basically asked, what's up with A1 and you? And she was trying to explain the situation between Rockstar saying that, you know, back in the day, she cut a lot of people off when she got with A1 and Rockstar is probably still feeling away about um, them messing up their business relationship. And um, Apple Watts was like, well, I knew it. Like in her heart, she already knew Rockstar really didn't want to rock with her like that. He really didn't want to be in the studio with her. It was all a ploy to get back at A1 and she's glad that she did not work with him. As they sit down, the phone starts ringing and Lyrica thinks it's her phone, but it's actually Apple's phone. And Apple looks at her phone and sees that it's her dad. She declines the call. She then goes to tell Lyrica that she recently started to um, gain a relationship back with her dad. Um, she was in the foster care system. Her dad picked up and left and left her and her mom and went on to raise four of the children. And now that he's back in her life, she really does not know how to feel and how to get over the past hurt that she had from not having the dad. Lyrica explains that she wished she was in that position because she's never met her dad. She doesn't know her dad. And, you know, she don't know, doesn't know what it would be like if she's ever met or would have met her dad. And Apple Watt says, I had that feeling before, and now that I have this new feeling, I don't like it because I don't know how to feel. And my heart really went out to her at that point. And so the next scene was really, really fast. It was like a scene of Tierra Marie and Akbar working out. And she's basically saying, you know, Akbar is her man. And he sat down, he looked at her in her eyes and told her that he's not cheating on her. So, you know, relationships is built on trust, and Akbar is who she loves, so she has to trust him. Girl, he looked at you straight in your eyes and lied. But that's neither here nor there. Moving on. So now we're at the hair salon for some girl talk. We see Brooke in the chair as well as Bridget Kelly. They're both getting their hair done, and they're talking to each other. Um, she basically... 
Brooke is basically telling Bridget Kelly what happened between her and Marcus, how, you know, the, the she invited Stasia over the house and she basically, you know, tried to tell Stasia that the relationship with her and Marcus is now over. She needs to run along, move bye-bye. And then girl had the audacity to <laughs> state that she might be pregnant. And she was like, okay, girl. Well, they went and got a test and then come to find out the girl's not pregnant. Her and Marcus are a little bit shaky, but she's cooking up a little something to real Marcus right on in, and she wants Brooke's assistance. Well, Paris also shows up, and Paris apparently is late, you guys, to the party. <laughs> it's for her hair appointment. So basically, Paris sits down in the chair. Now she's getting her hair done. And they asked her what happened with the whole Tierra Marie situation. You know, Brooke loves a good gossip. So Paris basically states to the ladies, you know, all the drama that's going on with Tierra Marie in this Akbar situation. You know, she she explains that she ran down on Akbar. You know, <laughs> she ran down on Akbar's wife. You know, met up for her. You know, the she said they'd be married for six years. And the girl know about Tia Marie. Tia Marie just don't know about the girl. Well, according to her, Tia Marie does not know about this girl. And, you know, she's explaining, you know, that the wife got really upset when she tried to question, you know, Akbar's loyalty. And Brooke says, well, whenever you talk to Tia, I would tell her that is the homie. And he is, whatever he does is not new to Brooke because he's dated two of Brooke's friends already. He basically has as a next chick that she saw at the gym rocking his his gear and that's his girlfriend and Paris goes okay well it must be this girl Sade right here and she shows her the picture and she's like no she's not even that color so now we know Akbar doesn't only have a wife he has a mistress and now <laughs> the mistress works in the gym and now Paris is like well now I gotta go undercover again and Brooke is like, well, where is Tierra in all of this? Like, how does Tierra not know? And Paris is like, I don't know, but I need to get down to the bottom of this. And she's like, dang, now I got to go to the gym? <laughs> of course she would say something like that. On to the next scene. So basically now we're at A1's video shoot. He's having another video shoot. You know, he's kind of conflicted because Lyrica stood up for him that night and it's got him thinking, you know, that he really needs to you know, talk to Lyrica and get down to the bottom of whatever is going on with them. And he wants to speak with somebody, you know, talk to one of his boys about it. And Marcus is going through his stuff too. So he invited Marcus down to his shoe. When Marcus gets there, he's talking to Marcus. He asks Marcus about the baby situation. He informs him that Stasi is not pregnant, but Brooke is crazy. Brooke showed up and showed out at the clinic, throwing condoms at the poor girl. And, you know, he loves Brooke's crazy, so he going to go ahead and meet up with Brooke and hear Brooke out. And A1 explains that he's kind of conflicted about the whole Lyrica situation. He wants to kind of talk to Lyrica, kind of see if they can smooth things out. He misses his wife and he wants his wife back. Duh, I mean, that's his wife. He married her for a reason. And so Marcus is like, well, Brooke may be crazy, but she's not a liar, bro, so be careful. And I'm just like, why would you even say something like that to him in the first place? Just because Brooke may be telling the truth or whatever doesn't mean that he shouldn't reconcile with his wife. That's his wife, not his girlfriend. All right? Next scene. So in the next scene, we see Rockstar, and Rockstar meets up with Amber Diamond. Now, Amber Diamond says that we know her from being Cisco's girlfriend, but I didn't even remember her. I'm going to be really honest. I did not remember her at all on this season, but she is a really, really beautiful girl. I just didn't remember her. I, like, I vaguely remember now, like, her fighting with Tia Marie, but... It wasn't even that serious where I was like, oh my God, that's her from the other season. No, it was not that deep. But anyway, she says she's a singer and Rockstar says, you know, she he met this beautiful Godiva chocolate and he wanted to get with her. And she says she is singing. He just wanted, he basically just wanted to have sex with her pretty much. Um, I noticed that um all the guys that like Lyrica wear pearls. They all wear pearls. Anyway, so she, they're both talking at a restaurant and 
she's talking about you know she's really serious about her music she wants to take her music career to the next level and he's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah obviously and then he starts speaking about well how are we going to do the compensation and i'm like what kind of sleazy deal is he trying to cut with this chick then she says you know what speaking of that i actually bought my manager and in walks her equally as gorgeous mom sean love so sean love basically says you know, she believes in her daughter. She wants to make something right. And when she heard about Rockstar, she had to do her little research. She heard he was the real deal. So she know exactly what to do with him. And when they spoke about how everything was going to progress, he's talking about 100 bands. She said she wants to do an EP. 100 bands for an EP. He said no for the record. She's like, what? She said, you know what? We're just going to start with what's in my purse. Obviously, they had some type of negotiation. She pulls out a wad of stacks. She pulls out stacks and hands it to him. And he's like, whoa, this is what we doing? He acting real thirsty. Like, <laughs> calm down, sis. It's not that deep, sis. Like, he's acting extra OD thirsty. So, he's holding the money in his hand like, hello. Like, you know, like he's never seen money before. But he is also very exaggerated. His character is very exaggerated on the show. Um, but he's holding the money, whatever, and he, she's like, I'll give you the other 20, but this is 20 bands, I'm going to give you the other 20 bands when it's complete, when the EP's complete. And he's like, no, for the record. So she's like, so she's like, you want me to give you 40 bands for a song? Like, and he's like, oh yeah, these song <laughs> is going to put you on the charts, put you on the map, and all that yada yada, whatever. Moving right along. So in the next scene, we see K. Michelle. She's at the doctor saying that she's ready, and they prep her, and she goes on and she has her surgery. So A1 goes home to visit with Lyrica and talk to Lyrica. He's been wanting to talk to her anyway, and she's been hitting him up since the whole incident at the showcase. So they sit down, and she looks at him dead in the eye <laughs> and tells him nothing happened between her and Safari. And he looks at her. And he believes her and he told her that that's all he wanted was an apology and to know what the real deal was what was really going on she tells him she feels like there's a reason she's been acting so strange and being so emotional and she gives him a pregnancy test and congrats to Lyrica and A1 they are pregnant and expecting a baby and he's like I'm gonna be a dad and he looks so excited and He's like, oh, what are we going to tell the family? How are we going to tell the family? And they decide that they're going to tell their family together over dinner. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, now we see K. Michelle and Monice again. K. Michelle's in bed. Kimberly is in bed recovering from her surgery. And she can't help but feel like she wants to seek revenge on the people, the family and friends who are supposed to be there for her that are not there for her during that time. And she just thanks God that Monice is actually there in her corner. Monice says she's always gonna be in her corner. Stop thinking negatively, think positively. The people who are supposed to be around you are around you and the people who are not supposed to be around you are not around you. And that's the way you basically have to look at things. So Kay stops crying about the situation and then we move on to the next scene. So in the next scene, Rockstar and Amber Diamond are in the studio. A B, this girl sounds terrible. Um there's nothing that he could do to make the song sound amazing. But since he getting some change. He's like, <laughs> I'm about to lie to her, <laughs> pretty much. So he tells her to come out the booth and he's talking to her. And um, she starts bringing up the fact that her mom is really hard on her. And he's like, mm, like cueing the violins while she's talking. He's so disrespectful. Um, and he's telling her the song that they made is a hit. And he's so excited about it. And he's telling the truth and her voice is nice and she did such a great job and she's like oh yay and I'm just like oh mm -mm. and she basically now is going off of him saying if he believes in her and he thinks that she's amazing she must be and I'm just like that's so messed up like why you do the girl like that why you lie to the girl like that uh-uh I'd have been so mad if I oh man he lied to her next scene 
So now we move on to Brooke and Bridget Kelly. Brooke and Bridget Kelly are in a dressing shop and Brooke is looking for something for the special something that she has planned for Marcus. And Bridget Kelly feels like she is gone over and beyond the friendship and gone into internship working for Brooke trying to get tickets booked and inviting Marcus's mama places and Marcus's mom is asking questions and she don't know what to tell her and she just does not know what's going on in Brooke's mind besides the fact that she believes that Brooke is crazy. <laughs> Brooke is like, oh, it's, just tell her whatever. Tell her her son is going to be doing a performance. And he's going to be performing, honey. And she's like, oh, okay. So Brooke has got something up her sleeve. <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next scene. And in the next scene, we see Paris and Akbar's next chick, Alejandra. And they're at MDE, which is the gym that Alejandra and Akbar have together. And MDE, as Paris asks, what does MDE stand for? Alejandra said it stands for Music Does Entertain. And when she asked her, oh, this year, Jim, she said, yeah. She said, how long you been working out? She said, oh, I've been working out all my life. And she's like, okay. She's like, okay, what does... MDE stand for and when she tells her she's like oh, okay you do music she's like oh no my man um you know my man does music so she goes oh so this is both you and your man's gym so she's like yeah she's like what's your man's name she's like Akbar she goes ooh Akbar that sounds strong <laughs> Paris is a damn fool She's a damn fool. So as she's talking to Alejandra, Miss Nikki Baby walks in and Miss Nikki Baby's like turning around and showing off her body. And Paris is like, oh, girl, it's true. She's dating him. She's like, oh, Akbar? And she's like, yeah. She's like, Akbar dating everybody. <laughs> Akbar dating everybody. And the girl is like, why you want to know? And she's like, well, because she's dating my fr he's dating my friend. And he's like, she's like, who and she goes Tierra and she goes okay and Paris is like well he has a wife and she's like okay yeah I know I know all about the situation like I know all about it and she's like you okay with being his man with somebody else like you okay with being a mistress of shy so it's a side chick thing and she's like no it's not like that and she's like but He's dating my friend, dating you, and has a wife. And she's like, she's he's putting value into her. She's driving one of our cars. So Paris is like, she's driving your car? One of y'all cars? And she's like, yeah. And Paris is just like, whoa. And she goes, well, why you want to know? And she's asking questions. And she tells Miss Nikki Baby, oh, I think you want to be with him too. And she's like, no, he probably want me, but I don't want him. And she was like, your soul is ugly. She's like, so? And she was like, no. <laughs> and then Alejandra tells him to leave. And Miss Nikki Baby says, I don't want to leave. And she's like, don't, you don't want to have to make me make you leave. And Paris is just like, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just leave. I am about to go to jail for fighting no Chewbacca. Let's get out of here. And... Miss Nikki Baby's like, all right, fine, we'll go, we'll get out of here. So as they're leaving out, Paris picks up her smoothies, like, oh, come on, Alejandro, you should have more of these. And it walks out. Paris is a hot, flaming mess. So the next and last scene, we see A1 and Lyrica walking into their dinner. Miss Pam, A1's mom, Lloyd and Patrice. Um, Lloyd, I think her name is Patrice. Yeah, Patrice or Patri Patrice, I think it is. She, they're all sitting down waiting for A1 to arrive. He obviously didn't tell them Lyrica was coming in tow. But him and Lyrica came in hand in hand and Lloyd immediately asked what was Lyrica doing there. Last time he heard, they, they were getting a divorce. What's going on? And 
she's like Lyrica goes oh here we go starts already so they're going over it and then Patrice says to Lyrica well you don't call me like that and um you only call me with some stuff going on she's like girl I call you every other day she's like oh you only now you recently started calling me when y'all start getting into it and in my mind I'm like you know what she's real foul because at the end of the day if you're supposed to be sisters or you want to be treated as sisters whenever y'all going through something you're going to bring up what she said to you in confidence about the problems that she's going through with her husband Anywho, um keep your friends close and your enemies close and that's all i gotta say so anyway um basically she they're all saying they're all pretty much upset that lyrica and a1 are about together miss lyrica g walks in in the midst of patrice and lyrica arguing and she's asking what's going on so patrice says with an attitude ask your daughter what's going on and she's like ask my daughter what's going on what's wrong with you and patrice gets up like she bought about it about the fight miss lyrica g and She's going forth, back and forth from Ms. Lyrica G and calls Ms. Lyrica G a bitch. And so, <laughs> Lyrica gets upset, splashes water in Patrice's face and says, don't call my mama no bitch. And they get to fighting, you guys. So, it's, it turns out to a whole big food fight going on at the place. And Lyrica, she ends up picking a chair over her head like she about to smash somebody in the face with a chair security's grabbing the chair and it's a whole commotion and that's how we end off the episode so that's it you guys that was love and hip hop hollywood season five episode six pretty hurt stay tuned i know i am super late with these videos you guys but life happens and at least i'm still putting it out there for me, at this point, it's better late than never because I do not want to quit. I'm going to go ahead and post vid the videos regularly <laughs> starting episode 8. <laughs> That's it. Same day upload starting episode 8. So that was it, you guys. Make sure that you like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Leave some comments down below. What did you think about the season thus far? Um, this episode wasn't one of my favorite episodes, but this season by far has been one of the best seasons of love and hip-hop, period. Seasons, not episode. This season has been one of the best seasons of love and hip-hop franchise, period. It's not going to be, in my opinion, it's not going to be the old love and hip hop New York with Jim and Christy. I loved that love and hip hop. But so far, going forward, this is one of the best seasons to date of love and hip hop, period. <laughs> so um, I can't wait to do the review on the next video coming up right after this one. So till next time, bye guys.